everybody in the kitchen with Chef Paul Smetala from Black Wolf Run, one of the American Club restaurants, golf courses. I think people, Paul, still think that, you know, if I don't stay at the American Club or if I'm not golfing, I can't go there. So not true. Absolutely. We have uh, the golf course, uh, Black Wolf Run and Whistling Straits. Many other restaurants, Horse and Plow, Kachina, uh, they're all open to the public. Come on down and uh, we're, we serve breakfast, lunch and dinner. So we're open, you know, six o'clock until uh, 10 o'clock most of the time. But And uh, it's a beautiful place to go for lunch. I mean, there's no other b more gorgeous setting than to sit, you know, overlooking the golf course. And right. When, when I'm out there and I'm saying hello to guests, I, I look out at what I... What Your I'm, office? My, yeah. That's my <laughs> office, right? And Not a bad it, office. It, I say, how lucky am I? That's why I've been, I've been there uh, 15 years now. So it, it's a great place to work. I get to cook food. I get to golf on a championship golf course. I mean, what could be better, right? And there's an outside patio too. I mean, if it's the weather's nice, yes, you know, yes, which it, we've had a few really nice ones lately. Yeah. It's still, still nice. You'll uh, serve out there until you can, huh? <laughs> that's right. Uh, well, we're talking a little bit about food and wine, which is the annual festival, food and wine festival that uh, is um, at the American Club in Kohler. And I, I tell people what makes it so special. One of the things is that they have these events in really big cities like New York and Aspen and Miami, and they're fantastic there, but you don't get to really get up close and personal. This is a smaller venue, and that's what makes it so special. Plus, Kohler in fall, I mean, is there anything more gorgeous with the pumpkins and the mums? It's so quaint and gorgeous. It really is a fun event. And you do have that opportunity to go up to some of these celebrity chefs and really spend some time. It's not a quick, uh, thank you, or sign my book and get out. They, they want to spend some time with you, and it, it's, it's really nice to talk to them and get their, their feedback on the stuff that they're doing and their philosophy on food. And, and so you also get to taste and eat mm -hmm. and, and drink. So if you're going to some of these classes and you're going to a wine tasting, you're going to you know, get several different glasses of wine to try. If you're going to some of the cooking classes with these celebrity chefs, they bring out food to you. You don't have to fight for it. You get your own little plate of the food that they're cooking. Right. We, we have a, the banqueted kitchen in back. So he's uh, the chef's making stuff up front for everyone. But there's definitely is a tasting for everyone to come in and try. and. Uh, it really is a special kind of a quaint event. Um, I've done stuff out in Aspen. This is so much more homey, and yeah. I get to, to meet uh, the suburb chefs is really a neat it thing. It is cool. Still lots of tickets available for lots of different events. The, right. Really a four-day festival. Kicks off Thursday night, October 17th, goes all day Friday, all day Saturday, and then lots going on Sunday. And there's lots of free events, too, so um, you can check out more online. But we are making a fun appetizer for people who um, kind of want to feel like they're eating sushi, <laughs> but they're not. This has been a hit at the restaurant, right? Right. We, we sell a ton of of these and, and myself I like sushi but I don't like nori I don't like the the seaweed uh, so there's a lot of other options we're gonna use a, a soy paper there's also rice paper you can use so if you're you're going out and you're getting sushi you know ask for it they have it at most most places so this is just something that we people maybe they don't like raw fish Let, let's do something with chicken just a little bit different but and it's, it's gonna look like sushi it's gonna look it tastes tastes better real fun okay no. so so this is what we're gonna how we're gonna start off okay so first we're gonna wet our hands and we have some uh sushi rice that we uh, cooked earlier and what is sushi rice sushi rice is just going to be a sticky rice uh you could also use jasmine rice but um, you, you can find sushi rice in the restaurants now, or in the grocery store, excuse me, somebody, just about um, anywhere. Somebody told me that you put a little vinegar in there, is that true? A little vinegar true? and just a little white, bit of salt. White vinegar? Or you can put some mirin in there. Okay, okay. Um, rice wine vinegar is what I would put, okay. stick with that Asian thing. Okay. You know? And then so. you bought this little sushi kit thing? Yeah, you can get those rollers just about anywhere. And if you don't have it, I mean, you can just use plastic wrap. It's just a little bit more difficult to roll. And But so, you've got yours covered in plastic wrap. And you know why you do that is because what you want to do is you don't want the rice to get stuck in into the, it's a lot harder to clean. Just throw a little bit of plastic that wrap on top tip. of, of it. It just tip. makes it easier. So it's really smoosh that rice down there. We want it flat because we don't want a ton of rice. We want to taste some of the other ingredients in there. I mean, uh, the rice is great, but there's so many other components here. We want to taste just about it. So we go about halfway. Yeah. Okay. Let's go a little bit more two than thirds. Okay, right. two thirds, two thirds. Yeah. Got All it. Right. Okay, so, up to the little bamboo yep. roller thing. So then we're going to take our uh, soy paper. We're going to set that on and it's a little bit big. So we're going to just cut that down a little bit. And again, you can get this at lots of different Asian markets. Asian markets thing. would have it. Sure. Do you need to wet it or anything? No. Nope. Okay. We're just go just like this. Okay. Okay. 
And we're gonna take our, we have some cream cheese, mm. just cream cheese logs. This is like kid-friendly sushi. Right. And, and friendly You know what, sushi. when we were doing this, um, I was kind of experimenting at home and playing with it. And my daughter, she's like, let's throw cream cheese. And I'm like, really? Ooh. Cream cheese? And, and it worked, We tried huh? it, she loved it, Ooh. so we ended up going with it. Grilled chicken breast that we put into thin strips. Anything yep. special with this? Or? Uh, we put it in a marinade. So we use some ponzu. Ponzu is just, uh, uh, and I, the recipe's online. Um, but it, it's lemon juice, a little bit of vinegar, uh, soy sauce, ginger, garlic. So it's an Asian yep. marinade. Yep. Okay. Asian Grill marinade. Grill up the chicken. So we marinate that yep. with a little bit of orange juice, and then uh, we just pan sear it and then throw it in the oven or you can grill it whatever works for you thin slices of red pepper red pepper right and then we're gonna throw a little bit of asparagus a great color there all colors is what it's all about now we're gonna i want to watch you roll all this right. we have about a minute left okay well we're gonna make this happen so we're just kind of holding it tight did i lose that lost a pepper that's oh. all right no worries oh that's my piece so then we just kind of <laughs> tuck it in and roll it all the way through. Okay, and we have our roll. And then you're gonna cut it and plate it and- We are. And then uh, crunchies, what are the crunchies? Okay, what we're gonna do, here. Yep. Let's do that right now. So we have some toasted panko or breadcrumb, mm. okay? Roll that in there, that's gonna give it the crunch. Yeah. We're gonna show you how to plate it up when we come back. All right. It's really fun, stay with us. 